The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesamento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesamento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. This is the Commodity Hour, and I wanted to, um, you know, cover a few things today. Mainly, is that we're getting down to some real interesting spots in the Chinese market, and you know, we can use the FXI ETF for that. But we'll go into that a little bit later. I wanted to start the show uh, about uh, talking a little bit about the these lunar things that are going on right now. And then also I wanted to mention, um, expand upon what Steve Rhodes said about the opening price because it's it's a really good indicator uh, if you're in a position and you don't know what to do uh, or you want to enter a position, it gives you a pretty good idea of what to do. But first I want to talk a little bit about the moon. We've got a, a, uh, a new moon coming up here uh, on the... Um, uh, the 24th, which is usually a bullish uh, scenario for stocks, that's based on you know Tom Felk's work that goes back for almost 80, uh, goes back 88 years, and it means if you buy on the new moon and sell on the full moon, you have a higher probability of winning than at any other time. But every 28 days, the moon comes uh, between the Earth and the Sun. That means the moon, the moon is in conjunction with the sun. However, at that specific moment that the moon is not visible uh, to the eye, the original meaning of the new moon refers to the first time the crescent moon occurs after conjunction. In other words, it's that first little white spot you see on the moon after the, uh, after the new moon. Uh, the moon is now is in the western horizon each night uh, because, you know, we start the uh, winter solstice today. Today is the... Um, shortest day of the year, and uh, so we have to, um, you know, I don't, I don't think that makes anything to do with the uh, with trading as far as the solstices, but they do have to do a lot with seasonality. And so, if 14 days later, we'll be looking at the the full moon, which will be the same thing, only on it will be at an opposition. In other words, the Earth will be on the other side of the uh, sun to the moon. So this is this is what we're looking at. The problem is that it's not 100%. It's only a probability. It's basically a 14-day cycle. Uh, but the thing that's important to realize is it does have some effect because we've looked at this, you know, for a long time, you know, here at TFNN, and, you know, we've been doing this for many years, and it shows that it does have a high probability. You know, since February, this thing has been making highs on new moons and lows on full moons which is a definition of a bear market. And since we had that solar eclipse on the 25th and the new moon, uh, that changed the scenario, and we've had the last two have been buys. Now we're coming into a high level, and, you know, we're right at a new moon again. So this is going to be really interesting, you know, what happens on the 24th. We're closed that day, of course, and then we're closed to 26th. So when we come in on the 27th and 28th, this should be really wild days, you know, of uh, fluctuation. Um, if, you, if you wonder why some of this works, I've always recommended to get the, the free book, Your Electric Life, by Dr. Al Larson. And, and I can honestly say that I, I would equate um, Al Larson with Nikola Tesla. Uh, as far as the markets go and, and the things that he's done, he's an incredibly brilliant man with double PhDs. And uh, but that little book, it's about 180 pages, really describes you know how our body is almost like a battery, and being 85 percent water and 15 percent element, it, it 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 responds to the gravitational pull of the moon, just like they do with the tides. And the tides are so accurate, you know, that they do this within the minute. Uh, and this is how they move, you know, our, our naval ships and stuff, you know, move around like that. And so it probably does affect the market, you know, somewhat. Now, the the next question that I wanted to address was the was the opening price principle that um, you know I wrote about many years ago. And the, actually, the opening price principle was developed. Uh, by Earl Hattity, you know, back in the in the 1950s. He was a commodity guy in Pasadena, California. He wrote a small little pamphlet about it. And then Earl died in the early 60s, and nothing really happened to it. And then when John Hill took me on as a mentor, 
uh, you know, way back in um, 1970, uh, one of the things that we worked on was the opening price principle. And John's son, John Jr., uh, was at uh, Duke, and he was in computer sciences. And so we computerized all of this. And when John got out of school, he he showed the, the opening price principle to Toby Crable. And Toby Crable wrote a book called The Opening Price Principles. And now they manage uh, $2 billion, and that's all they do is trade the opening price principle. The opening price principle means that after the market opens, it starts to move. And if you're above the opening price after the first 20 minutes or so, the probability of the market closing higher on the day is better than 60%. And by the way, if you're on the short side of the market, if, you're, if the market is going down, the probability means that it's going to go down you know, for the uh, remainder of the of the day. Now, the reason why it's important for trading is if you're stuck in a position and you don't really know what to do, if you'll just look at the opening price of where the stock or commodity opened at that particular time, and, you know, you're really, you know, you feel like you're hung out to dry and you're nervous and you don't want to be in the position, if you're below the opening price and you're long, you really have a very, very low probability of coming out of this. Sure, sometimes it'll reverse, but most of the times it will not. The same token as if if you're long and the, the, the uh, thing does something different than you, you. In other words, if you're long and you're below the opening price, the same thing, you know, occurs at, at that particular time. So that's the, that's the basis of the opening price. In other words, you always want to be in the direction of the opening price. If you're above the open, you want to be long. If you're below the opening, you want to be short. And if you look at any of these commodities that we're, that we look at, you know, during the day, and, you know, we could take just a look at just one in particular. Uh, we'll just take a look at gold just for a um, just for a quick a quick look. And the opening price for gold, of course, would be, you know, real early in the morning, which would be, um, uh, we, have to, we have to use London time, of course, because, uh, you know, that's really where the gold starts. But you'll see that gold has been down, you know, almost all day uh, below the opening price. And so that tells us that, you know, that this is one of the things that you're looking at. So if you're long gold from this level, the odds of you, you know, having a, a profit at the end of the day aren't nearly as high as if you were short. So that's it. It's just a probability. It's a good thing to, you know, to keep an eye on as you're, as you're looking at uh, these things of, uh, you know, what we're doing. Now, we have a couple of positions uh, that we talked about last Friday. Uh, one was the uh, silver market. And we are getting down to uh, the, testing the 618 of the previous low, uh, which was on the 19th, so three days ago. We've uh, made a 61% retracement of the longer one, 786% of the other one. So you don't want silver to go below 2850. Uh, that would put us in a break-even trade in the ETF or SLV that we looked at. So that's why we want to, you know, keep an eye on that. So we, we've covered the, the silver future uh, basically has still has a little profit in it. It's holding up so far. And uh, the next one we want to look at, of course, is the, the sugar market because we also we bought some sugar, uh, you know, for those of you that trade commodities. And, and realize that I, I know that a lot of you folks don't trade commodities. And, uh, you know, you want to be able to uh, use the DBA if you want to be able to, uh, you know, trade sugar, wheat, and corn and those things. It's a good way of doing it. This one is still showing a $600 profit, and that's you know that's where we that's where we stand with this particular uh, you know commodity. So that's what we're looking at now. I, I want to mention uh, a little bit about this uh, FXI, which is the Chinese ETF, because we are forming a a beautiful. Um, well, I, I think they're all beautiful, <laughs> but uh, we're making a a, a major Gartley pattern here on the long-term, you know, charts. I mean, going back, you know, to 2009, the Chinese market is finally, you know, coming down to a 786 retracement at around 2050. And we closed at around 2200, I believe, in that ET, uh, in the uh, Shanghai index. So if we can get that down about a 150 points in the next few weeks, we want to be looking at that as a potential, as a potential buy. I know that's, it's not a commodity, but it's related to commodities because, you know, China buys just about everything that, uh, you know, uh, copper and gold and silver and everything else as far as, uh, you know, their, their, uh, the way that they, uh, you know, purchase this stuff. So their demand is going to be, 
you know, quite interesting. Okay. I think the next thing we should cover would be the crude oil market because, uh, you know, the, the crude oil made a beautiful AB equals CD pattern, uh, you know, back on um, last week. And it has held, uh, you know, very well. And it has started to move very, very strongly. We've already exceeded the 618 of the high from um, November the 20th. So that's telling us that, you know, we really have uh, in this market has really accelerated out of the D point which was exactly the 382 level and an ABCD pattern, which made it a Gartley. And, uh, you know, that's what, we're, that's what we're going to do. Now, uh, just, just getting back to the FCX, someone just uh, uh, instant messaged me. The, um, we, I'm not making a recommendation here, but when we get closer to that price, then I'll look at it because there's probably better ETFs to look at than FXI. That just happens to be uh, the one that I look at. So I will look at others. Uh, I think there's one called the CAF that someone uh, mentioned that looks pretty good, and we'll take a look at that. But that, that's that's down the road a little bit. It just happened to be a pattern that we're looking at, you know, really closely at, uh, in the hedge fund, and and so th this is why we're we're watching it a little bit. And um, so that's all. The, the, I want to go through this crude oil. This is really important, folks, because if you remember when we were making this high up here at the 707 level, at that 103.70, um, you know, the at that time the we were having major divergence in the heating oil contract and we were having major divergence in the gasoline contract. And the market did, in fact, you know, go down just like we thought it was going to go down. When we reached point D of this ABCD in the crude oil uh, contract, you know, we we, so, we told we, we mentioned to you folks last week that look things are, things have changed because now you know we are having divergence that is positive because we are having the uh, gasoline futures were forming a bullish Gartley pattern at that time, and the heating oil was making a seven eight six retracement. Uh, on the downside. So this is why, you know, crude oil had a high probability of rallying because you had the, the components that make up crude oil had not only returned from bearish that they began finally sh showing that there was a signs of being bullish. And we had a bullish Gartley, you know, down there in the, in the, in the gasoline futures. And since that time, uh, gasoline futures have rallied about 20 cents a gallon. Here in Tucson, um, uh, we don't drive a lot, but you know when I do fill up for gas, uh, last uh, about a week or so ago I filled up for two dollars and ninety nine cents, I believe, and uh, that yesterday when I filled up it was three dollars and forty four cents, and I mean believe me, gasoline hasn't moved up that much, so somebody's anticipating, you know, things going higher. We've got a little break here, uh, pay some bills for Christmas and Santa. For um, if you have any questions. 877-927-6648. Are your cable rates rising? Tired of being pushed around by your provider? It's time to push back. Cut the cable and get Dish Network installed with absolutely no equipment to buy. Here's the best part. Packages start at just $24.99 a month for an entire year. That's right. Call now and get Dish Network installed free. Plus your choice of HBO, Cinemax, or Stars free for three months. If you call in right now, Dish Network will also throw in free HD for life. PMG Dish, a Dish Network authorized retailer, is waiting for your call and can have you watching TV as soon as tomorrow. Call 800-565. 8010. Imagine all your favorite movies, sports, and shows in crystal clear digital quality for far less money and you won't have to deal with the cable company anymore. At only $24.99 per month, they're practically giving it away. Call now for full details. Call 800-565-8010. That's 800-565-8010. Again, 800-565-8010. Limited time off for prices, packages, and programming subject to change without notice. 24-month agreement required. Cancellation fees, auto pay, and paperless billing and other restrictions apply. Call for details. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be at the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. 
Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. to magnify their short-term perspective, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. Direction Shares, ETFs to the power of X. To learn more about Direction Shares, click on the Direction banner on the front page of TFNN.com or call 866-476-7523. There is no guarantee that the funds will achieve their objective. The ETFs are not suitable for all investors and should be utilized only by sophisticated investors who understand short-term trading, leverage risk, consequences of seeking daily leverage investment investment results and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. An investor should consider the investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus contains this and other information and can be obtained at DirectionShares.com. Please read the prospectus carefully before investing. Distributed by Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi folks, Steve Rhodes here. Tom O'Brien and I need your help. Together, Let's change the cash for gold industry once and for all. Now is the time to unleash the game changer, and that's you folks. We've all seen the power of viral marketing, it's overthrown dictators, and now it's time to rid the thieves in this cash for gold industry. Together, we can change this industry in a heartbeat. You know about our industry leading payouts, our free tools, our video valuation, and the education that we provide to help folks value their jewelry. Tom and I are experts and the industry's most trusted team. Please join us now by spreading the word to your entire email list. We'll pay you 5% of the total payout, which on average would be $50 per transaction. 100 transactions is five grand in your pocket. We'd rather put our marketing dollars in your pocket and more money in your referrals pocket. Go to TigerMetalExchange.com and click on the Become a Partner button to join our team. Let's start a revolution, folks. We can't do it without you. TigerMetalExchange.com, the only click you need to make. Give the gift of silver this holiday season. TFNN and Great Panther Silver want to give you the gift of silver. From now until December 30th, TFNN will hold a drawing once a day, five days a week, business days only, and one lucky entrant will receive one of these beautiful coins that we will mail to whomever you desire. Winning one of these extraordinary coins could not be easier. There's no contest and no gimmicks, just a simple drawing allowing you to give the gift of silver this holiday season. Go to the front page of TFNN.com for details segment is brought to you by direction shares to learn more about tactical tools for the sophisticated active investor hit the direction shares banner on the front page of tfnn.com now back to the futures hour okay folks we're back and we were finishing up the uh, crude oil uh, segment of the, the the show we talked about you know how the the uh, gasoline futures had made a a bullish guard lay down there, and that the heating oil had pulled down to exactly the 786 retracement. Uh, it went up to the high uh, a few weeks ago, exactly at the 786 retracement in early November, and now we've pulled down and we've had a really strong move in heating oil, you know, coming off of this 786. This is a very strong seasonal uh, for uh, crude oil to be, uh, heating oil to be strong, you know, during January and February. So uh, that's also a potential that, that is occurring. It looks to me as if the crude oil has, the way it is coming out of this uh, bullish Gartley from uh, 92 and a half, uh, we, we, we focused this in the newsletter this past weekend, the fact that this was a very uh, bullish formation. And since we've moved, you know, better than, um, you know, 7.5% in a matter of just a few days, that tells us that we're probably going to assault that 103 level. And above 103, you know, that sets up 112 uh, a, a barrel in crude oil. So uh, it, it might not make it, of course, but this is what it looks like. Uh, you know, presently. So this is what we're we're keeping uh, keeping our uh, mind out. Someone asked me a question about the SLV, and we do not want the SLV to go below twenty seven ninety five. You know, it's got a small profit in it right now, about thirty cents, but that's not very much in in this in the silver market. In the silver market itself, it is held up relatively well at uh, the twenty nine dollar level, but you know, of course, that could fade at any moment. Because we do have a lot of volatility, that's one thing I, I believe we're going to continue to see uh, a lot of volatility in the markets, and that's what uh, you know. That's what we're 
that's what we're shooting for. Now, I want to I want to want to go to the Treasury bonds because I know everyone has an interest uh, in that, and you know we, we've had a little bit of a sell-off here. I, I wanted to show uh, again the long-term cycle in the um, Treasury notes, which are the you know the shorter duration, you know up to five five years, and uh, that has completed the 1.27 level. Uh, on the longer term cycle, uh, we still have not made the you know 149, 150 level in the 30 year bond. We, we we had seven up days in the bonds, and then we backed off you know a little bit. We've had support come in at the 143 minor support. As long as we stay above 141 in the Treasury bonds, then I think we'll be okay. Now the problem arises is that if we have a very bullish January. Uh, that's not going to be good for bonds because people will be moving out of bonds. They're not going to have the feeling of the safe haven or flight to quality, and they'll want to jump on to stocks in order to you know increase their yields. And and that is a possibility. This happened in January of 2008. We went up a little bit, not not much, about 10 percent over a four month period in 2008. We crested uh, early in the spring, and then you know we dropped uh, over 50. 55 percent in a matter of a few months so uh, the bradley model is telling us that we are scheduled to have a rally the first part of the year so we'll have to wait and and see if that unfolds but uh, right now i don't think we should change anything uh, on our uh, order for the t uh, tbt as a matter of fact I, i'm going to lower that lo uh, lo order to uh, 1680 from 1770 and the reason for that is is that's the actual number that we're looking at I originally wanted to get in at 1717 uh, be just because I wanted to enter the market I was so so bearish these bonds that I I thought that you know it's better to to get in early and 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 possibly uh, you know uh, you know just so I wouldn't miss the trade and and I, I don't think we'll miss it even if I miss the first part of it we'll get a we'll get a rally back and we'll be able to, uh, you know, get in get in touch with uh, this uh, uh, long side of the TBT. I believe without too much trouble. Um, I think the important thing is is to have fa uh, patience in these numbers because they 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 don't let you down very often. Uh, they do sometimes, of course, but not very often. But if you're going to Tiger TV, you'll see that we have a um, a p potential for the. Uh, TBT to come down one more time to this 1680 level. I know the low uh, that we made uh, on this move was 1741, uh, and I know it was close to the to the number. And you know, people ask me, you know, why didn't I go there? I I, I base these things on patterns, and if it doesn't hit within, you know, just almost the exact number, you know, I I have a tendency not to to believe in the pattern as nearly as much as if it's perfect. And I. Uh, uh, that's all I'm waiting for. I can just tell you that it's around 1680 is what I'd like to be buying the TPT. We got a, a commercial here, 877-927-6648. If you want to get great trade setups in equity as well as the option market, come over to TFNN.com and test drive my daily newsletter, Market Insights, for two weeks absolutely free. Each trade setup comes with a profit projection as well as stock placement. Included in Market Insights is a Twitter alert service. This allows you to take advantage of intraday setups. Volatility is back in the markets. What does that mean to you? To me, it spells short-term opportunity each and every day. The days of trending up on lighter volume are gone. We have come off the highs with volume across the globe. Don't get caught in a complacency trap. Many of the indices have given back two months of trading in one week. We have a trader's market. You can take advantage of this trader's market by test driving my daily newsletter, Market Insights, free for two weeks. Market Insights will give you the edge you're looking for in the markets. Go to TFNN.com under Newsletter. Hit the Market Insight tab for your two-week free test drive right here, right now. Homeowners, did you know a burglar could break into your home and get away in just five minutes? A locked door may not be enough to keep a thief out of your home. Think about what you can lose, and then think about this. 
Now you can get a free security system monitored by ADT, the leader in home security. Pick up your phone now and get free hardware, free medical and fire alert, and free activation. It's an $850 value. Just call Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, at 1-800-949-8207. You'll get 24-hour protection, and there's no cost for parts or activation. So call now about a free security system monitored by ADT. Call 1-800-949-8207. $99 installation charge, 36-month monitoring agreement at $35.99 a month. Call for terms and conditions to this offer and protect your home license numbers. Call now, 1-800-949-8207. That's 1-800-949-8207. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 thousand ounces per year at a cash cost of only four hundred and fifty dollars per ounce the hollister mine in nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only 527 dollars per ounce great basin gold is cash flow positive and trades on the toronto and new york stock exchanges under the symbol gbg What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley of Smith Barney believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower your volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angelo O'Brien, financial advisor and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, folks, we're back, and someone uh, asked me a question about the opening price again because I know it gets a little confusing. Uh, But what I did was I posted into the uh, Tiger TV the gold chart and gold is very actively traded and all i did was to show you the opening of the london market Uh, that's when the high and gold was occurring at that time and if you'll take a look at that each of the rallies that um, that occurred in gold uh, there was one around uh, you know 5 30 in the morning new york time and there was another one around 8.30, and then there was another one around 10.30. And all of these uh, were lower than that opening price. So that's telling you that the downtrend in gold has still doing. So if you're long gold uh, from this level, you know, the odds of you making money today are, have been reduced by, you know, quite a bit. So that's, uh, that's the only thing. Let me give you just a little tiny bit of um, uh, information here. When 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 John Hill and I did this work in 1983, you know the computers were just about you know at the, at the beginning of these things. We barely had charts uh, at that time. 83 was the first year we first started to get charts, and all of the markets opened exactly at time. We didn't have overnight trading markets, and so the opening price was really more influential than it is now. But we must use London as the opening because that's the largest uh, forex market in the world it's also the largest metals market in the world and also the largest crude oil markets in the world so you have to be able to use that london open so anyway uh, in order to do this prove it to yourself just look at the opening price every day watch how markets move around that opening price and it'll pay you big dividends we've got a, a call from carlos from garden grove california are you there Yes, I'm right here, Larry. Thank you for what, taking my call. What can I do for you, Carlos? 
Okay, I have a question, uh, Larry, for you. And uh, can you explain, please, uh, what is the, the relationship between the dollar? Uh, let's say if the dollar goes up and bonds go down, will the dollar go, go down too? Well, you know, I look at each one separately because I, I trade each one uh, as a separate entity. Do you, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I don't put a spread on. In other words, I don't go long the dollar, you know, and short the bonds, you know, anything like that. But the one thing that I can do is that I can go in and look at the relationship uh, between the two, and I'm going to do that as we speak. And uh, I'll put this into the Tiger TV, and you'll get an idea uh, of how things work. Now, the red line that you're going to see is going to be the um, tre the, uh, the 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 tr treasury bonds, and you'll see that there is a uh, a very strong correlation. Um, I'm doing. I'm trying to do this, uh, and believe me, when I I can't walk and chew gum <laughs> at the same time. So bear with me here a second, and uh, you know we will we'll put this into the tiger den and we'll discuss it. But the uh, the red line that you're looking at in here will be the 30-year uh, uh, Treasury bond, and you'll see that there is a very high correlation between the U.S. dollar and the Treasury bonds. I mean, I think that correlation, just eyeballing it, has got to be better than 85%. And, uh, you know, so there is a strong correlation. Now, I, I don't trade the dollar index itself. I trade the euro and the, the six major cross rates against it. I, have, I think the last time I put a trade on in the U.S. dollar index, it was about 94 uh, not 1994, but it was trading at 94. And uh, but right now, as, as you can look into the Tiger uh, TV, you'll see that this has a high correlation. But you have to decide which one do you want to trade. Do you want to trade the dollar index, or do you well, want to actually, trade the bonds? Actually, what I'm doing is I'm watching the uh, the dollar. Since every time the dollar goes up, the market comes down. And I'm expecting the market to pull back, but I see the, just the dollar not moving from uh, the level that it is right now. It looks like it's holding at these levels. And I was thinking that the dollar was still had some room to go up. And I start seeing the, uh, the uh, uh, bonds pulling back a little bit. So that makes me think possibly I'm wrong, thinking that the dollar can go up a little bit. Okay. I, what, I, what I'd like for you to do is to stay with me for just a minute, and I want to show you a longer-term chart on this so that you can see that it does change a lot. Okay, Carlos? Stay Thank with you. me. I appreciate that. Okay. Give the gift of silver this holiday season. TFNN and Great Panther Silver want to give you the gift of silver. From now until December 30th, TFNN will hold a drawing once a day, five days a week, business days only, and one lucky entrant will receive one of these beautiful coins that we will mail to whomever you desire. Winning one of these extraordinary coins could not be easier. There's no contest and no gimmicks, just a simple drawing allowing you to give the gift of silver this holiday season. Go to the front page of TFNN.com for details. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. I should get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. 
Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighed of that was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN. Dot com. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, Carlos, are you there? Yes, I'm right here, Larry. Okay, if you have a chance today, go into Tiger TV because I went back yeah, six right years. And you can see that the correlation between the dollar index and the treasury bonds, even though it's been incredibly good over the past, uh, you know, eight or nine months, uh, historically it does not have that good a correlation as far as timing, you know, where to enter. So I think you have to, you know, to find the vehicle that you like to trade, whether it's the dollar index or the euro or the treasury bonds or the TPT, and use that because I, I don't see anything here on this long-term correlation chart that is uh, – you know, anywhere near what we're doing uh, currently. In other words, we're running around 85% right now just by eyeballing it. But going back six years, that correlation is not anywhere near uh, that accurate. Wow. So that means, because um, I'm the one who called you yesterday about I remember, XLF. yes, I remember, yes. yes. And, I'm, and I was looking at the price of XLF, and it's actually higher, but I'm still waiting. So when I saw the, uh, the dollar going sideways actually today, and the bonds pulling back, they said, wow, how about if possibly doesn't pull back? And uh, I don't see the price of 12.05, but I'll be waiting, Larry. I, okay, well, I really don't, don't, first of all, you, you said XLF? Yes. That okay, was now that's, that's, the, that's the financial, uh, you know, part yes. that really uh, doesn't have anything to do with the, uh, with the dollar index. And that has, well, this one has been, you know, relatively strong because it came out of here, uh, you know, very, very quickly. You know, off of this, uh, off this bottom that we made. But can I make a suggestion for you, Carlos? Sure. That's helped me uh, through the years. Try not to think too much. You know, just no. Honest to God, just just watch the watch the chart because if there's okay. more buying, prices are going up. If there's more selling, prices are going down. And believe me, there's always going to be a reason that someone will give you why things are going the way they are, and that's just their opinion. And we all know what opinions are. But the one thing that the market can't do from you is that they can't lie to you. So if prices are going higher, someone is certainly buying the stuff. And if prices are going lower. You know, it's going down. So that's the you know that's the bottom line. Your, your thought well, process your thought process is good, but when you're trading, you really want to just focus on what you have to risk and what the pattern is doing. In my opinion, right. Well, thank you so much, Larry. My pleasure. I've got a library of about oh several thousand books that that wow. go through all of this fundamental thinking and all that stuff. And believe me. Uh, you know, I, I you know paid a fortune for it. I you know, <laughs> but frankly, I get more out of just watching what the bar charts are doing than, than anything else. Okay. Well. Okay. Thank you so much, Larry. Yes. Thanks. Happy holidays to you, my friend. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You. You bet. Okay. We want to talk a little bit about the corn market here because we are uh, we had a, a tremendous move in corn uh, over the past year, and now we've uh, we've come down. And we've made a, a really significant bottom down at that uh, 580 uh, level in the corn. And uh, if you get a chance to go in, you'll see, uh, you know, in June, the market had made a double top with a three-drive pattern uh, up at that $7 a barrel, $7 a bushel level. And then we had the, the huge ABCD move uh, to the downside. 
uh, you know, down to that 575 per bushel. And now we've we've had a pretty good bottom. And so what we're going to be watching for is a little bit of a pullback, you know, to be buying uh, either corn or soybeans uh, or wheat, you know, whichever one looks good. And they're, they're all acting very similar right now. All of the grains, uh, because of the seasonality, the, the hedging pressure is, is finally over. And so we have, uh, you know, situations where we're, we've made major corrections, A, B, C, D, Gartley patterns uh, in all of the grains, the rice, uh, wheat, corn, soybeans, uh, all of them. As a matter of fact, the soybeans were, were really unusual. Well, what do I mean unusual? This is ridiculous for me to say something unusual. What's important is that you take a look at it because if you go back over the last year and a half, the low that we made in soybeans, uh, you know, eight days ago uh, on our last show that we talked about here in uh, the commodity department at uh, TFNN is we hit an exact 61% retracement within two cents of a uh, of the in the soybean market. We made a low at that $11 uh, a bushel level, and uh, so far we've rallied about 60 cents a bushel uh, in the soybean. So the reason why I posted the DBA is because it, can, it contains wheat, corn, soybeans, and sugar, and so you're you're allowed to you're able to get into those and actually uh, participate in it without risking very much, and it gives you a pretty good chance of uh, you know without without too much risk. That's what I'm saying because in commodities you know you have to risk a little bit more because the margin is you know basically running at the um, you know, at the five percent level, that's uh, you know really what we're what we're looking at. Uh, if we if we take a look at the wheat market, um, and uh, believe me, I um, I, I enjoy uh, the wheat market. It's been incredibly good to me over the years, uh, going back many many years, and uh, it's it's one of my favorites. It's not a largest crop as corn, but it trades uh, incredibly well. Uh, here is the same situation where we've had a you know pretty good correction you know down to the 618 re- retracement and this is a seasonal time of the year when we want to start to be looking to be you know a buyer of these things so that's what we're that's what we're focusing on uh fact is the next time we have our um next show which will be the end of the month uh a week from today we'll be having some um uh, recommendations on on how to get into some of these, and that's you know really what we're what we're trying to uh, do for you folks is to get in without risking you know a, an arm and a leg because some of these can be uh, you know pretty pretty tricky. Well, you know one of the things when you make recommendations you know on a show like this is I try to focus on the amount of money that you have to lose. I'm not concerned about you know how much money we can make because if you can be concerned about you know what your losses are your profits will come to you and uh, you don't have to worry about it. So winners think how much money you know they have at risk and losers think how much money I can win. This is why Las Vegas you know makes such you know big uh, profits is because they have all these flashing lights on their slot machines and other games that shows that you can make a 3 million, 1 million, 2 million, 5000 dollars you know, whatever it is, because they want you to focus on how much you can win, not how much money money you can use. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but about 10 years ago, the um, the casinos had a uh, credit card thing where you could just put your credit card, you know, into the slot machine and use that. But unfortunately, people, uh, you know, don't don't know how to control risk. They abuse that a great deal, and so the Nevada Gaming Convention Commission, uh, you know, made that uh, <laughs> illegal. At least in commodities, when you get a margin call, uh, they cancel the credit card. So that's the way it goes. Uh, We'll be back, 877-927-6648. As Tom says, go long America. Now you can join TFNN and Barnes & Noble to keep money in your community. Purchase Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, before December 31st from your local Barnes & Noble store. And you will be given access to not just one, but two exceptional archived courses. Tiger Scaling, The Tiger Butterfly, and Gartley. The Art of Timing the Trade is more than just a book. It's an educational journey that will help you understand the Wall Street greed cycle and learn how to recognize profit from genuine price moves. So, for the cost of just under $30, you will receive an excess of $300 in trading education from Tom O'Brien, TFNN, and Barnes & Noble. And you will be helping to support an important local business, your local bookstore. If you do not have a Barnes & Noble in your community, then go to your local bookstore. We'll be sure to work with them to keep your purchase local. So let's 
support our local businesses, keep money in your community, and get a great education. But be sure to act now, because you have until December 31st to take advantage of this opportunity. Go to the front page of TFNN.com for details. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Would you like to discover the next great tech stock? David White, TFNN's technology guru, has just launched his new newsletter, The Technology Insider. In his newsletter, David will be looking for those shining stars that may turn into the next Apple, Microsoft, or Cisco. David combines his technology background as a software programmer with his market skills as a successful professional trader to give you this unique newsletter. We're on the verge of the next great tech run. With the Technology Insider, you'll be in front of the run-up and not lagging behind. David is developing a long-term investment portfolio. Therefore, we're only offering the Technology Insider as an annual subscription with a remarkable price of only $395. That's right. For a little over $1 a day, you'll receive the fundamental technology wisdom and technical trading skills of the Technology Insider, David White. What are you waiting for? Go to the front of TFNN.com, click on the link on the front page, sign up for your two-week free trial, and become a Technology Insider today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of The Money Game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look, fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and The Money Game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You were born to be a money master and i'll teach you how go long america purchase tom's best-selling book the art of timing the trade your ultimate trading mastery system before december 31st you will receive an excess of 300 dollars in trading education now back to the futures hour okay folks i want to end the uh, commodity to uh, uh, part department of uh, talking a little bit about the S&P because we are going higher. Uh, I posted a chart on the uh, utility index on a weekly basis, and we have broken out above the 618 retracement, and that was after two major corrections. Uh, this is very bullish. Uh, you know, I you know, there's no other way you can interpret it. So it looks like the Bradley model might be right this year, and we could be rallying into the first part of the year. You know, if there is some type of reversal uh, that comes in on the 28th, then, you know, we'll probably be able to take advantage of that. But uh, even the Dow Jones transportation is back up to the 61% retracement again. This is the fifth time that it's hit that. So we're, we're coming into this, uh, this level at a high point. So we'll have to, to see how the market's, you know, going to, uh, going to handle it. So that's the main thing that we want to, you know, keep looking at. And then also the what we mentioned before was the Dow Jones uh, Bradley model looks like it's actually holding up into this area, uh, you know, coming into a high into this uh, 28th, which is very very unusual. Uh, of course, we still have several more days to go. We have tomorrow, which will be probably the slowest day of the year, and then after that we will have the um, you know the the date coming in which which is is it the 28th so well we'll have some things to look at 
I wanted I wanted to end this show. Um, I, most of you know that I came from a little uh, uh, town in southern Indiana, Terre Haute, and uh, my parents uh, were born in Italy. My grandparents lived with us, you know, my whole life. And um, every year since I was uh, oh, I, since I, ever I can remember, the last week in Christmas, uh, my mother and my grandmother would make cookies. Uh, and we would have to take them to the to the nursing home. And believe me, nursing homes back then were not like they are now. It was a, a horrible experience for a little thing, you know, a little guy like me. And today I call my sister, who uh, she's, little, she's four years younger than me, but we're very close. I talked to her at least three or four times a, a week. And today she had her five, six grandchildren there and five of their little friends. They make a, a little trip, and they're making cookies all day. And then she takes them to the nursing home. And they give cookies to all the old people today, and it really, uh, you know, really made me remember Christmas uh, the way it was. We we never exchanged gifts, uh, even when even my children were little. We, the, the, the kids would get one or two little gifts, and that was it. We had a Christmas tree, and uh, nothing big. Most of the stuff we tried to do was to try to help some people that were in a heck of a lot, you know, worse than I. And I had my greatest Christmas present today. Uh, my daughter. Uh, called me and told me that they had adopted a family for uh, Christmas. It's a mother, a 26-year-old mother with a 5-year-old boy. Uh, they've been abused, and my, my daughter is a counselor. She has a practice, uh, her private practice, and this is not one of her patients, but they had the choice of uh, you know pop, taking these folks in for the holiday. They have no place to go, no money or nothing, and so... Um, their their Christmas is going to be in taking care of this family. And my little grandson, who's 11 years old, uh, we, we get him a gift, of course, but he was all for it. He said he would give all of his presents, you know, away uh, just to make the other people happy. And, boy, if you think that doesn't make a father feel good, because my daughter sent me an email, and she said, Dad, I learned this from you. And so that made my Christmas, folks. So I want to end the show by wishing everybody... You know, a Merry Christmas and um, uh, Happy Hanukkah, whatever, uh, you know, religion you hap- happen to be. And uh, it's going to be a good year for 2012. Uh, it, it, it appears that it's going to start like the one in 2008, how it ends up, you know, as anybody's guess. But uh, the volatility, I believe, is here to stay. And um, it's going to be quite interesting uh, you know, no matter what. Keep the orders working for the trade of the year. I still think we have a chance of getting that at the 1680 per share. And uh, God bless everyone and a Merry Christmas. And many thanks to, you know, Tom O'Brien and his folks for making this all available to you folks because you get a great education in here. And uh, some of it works, some of it doesn't, but more works than not. God bless you all.